Hi guys, good day. It's me, Teacher MJ, and our topic for today is all about the properties of a rhombus. So without further ado, let's do this topic. Now, class, let's define first what's the meaning of a rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal sides. So it is a special type of parallelogram. So we, we called it a special type because there are properties of a rhombus which is the same with the parallelogram. So if you don't know about parallelogram class, I do have the link on the description below about the properties of parallelogram and solving all sides at all angles of a parallelogram. So let's start with the definition of a rhombus. A rhombus has four equal sides. Four equal sides. Therefore, this side DW is equals to WO, OR, and RD or DR according to its definition that a rhombus has four equal sides. Four equal sides. So, the properties of a rhombus, let's start with number one. It says that the opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are parallel. So, therefore, we can say that this line, this DW, this segment DW, so DW, the segment DW, is parallel to this line RO, is parallel, okay, let me just, parallel to RO, and this DR, DR is parallel to WO. Right? Line DR is parallel to line WO. That's according to the first property of a rhombus. Alright? So, the second property, it says that the opposite angles are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. So, therefore, this angle D, okay, this angle D is congruent to angle O. So this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle, this angle W, okay, is congruent to angle R. Alright, so if this is, just in case, if this is 40 degrees, or let's say this is 40 degrees, therefore, this angle R, it should be 40 degrees, because the opposite angles are congruent. So, if this is 140 degrees, this should be 140 degrees. Why is that, sir? Because the opposite angles are congruent. Alright? So, opposite angles are congruent. So, just an example, class. Angle W is 40. Of course, angle R must be 40 degrees because opposite angles are congruent. So, we can say that, we can write it like, angle W is congruent to angle R and angle D is congruent to angle O. That's it, class, about the second property of uh, rhombus. So, let's go to the third property. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So, consecutive angles are supplementary. So, angle D, so angle D plus angle W, it should be equals to 180 degrees. So, Let's try another example. What if angle D is, what if we say angle D is 120? So what would be the angle W? Because angle D, from the word supplementary class, it means that the two angles, the sum must be 180. The sum of two angles must be 180. Because as supplementary, it means the sum of two angles must equals to 180. So if angle D is 120, okay, angle D plus angle W, Angle D plus angle consecutive angles class, it means that this angle and this angle, this angle and this angle, so that, that's, the, that's the meaning of consecutive. So, angle D and angle W are consecutive angles. Angle W and angle O are consecutive angles. So, angle D plus angle W, it should be 120 degrees. Uh, no, sorry, 180 degrees because it says that consecutive angles must be supplementary. So, if angle D is 120 degrees, therefore... Uh, what would be the this angle, the angle W, so that we can make it 180 degrees. Therefore, angle W must be 60 degrees. Now, if angle W is 60 degrees, what would be the angle O? So, if you use the opposite angles, of course, angle D is 120, angle O must be 120. But if you use the consecutive angles, if this is 60, therefore, this should be 60 plus 120. This, this should be 120 so that we can make 180 degrees. That's the third property class. Consecutive angles are supplementary.
Alright, so I hope I hope you are not confused about consecutive angles. So it means that the, the sum of two angles must be 180. This angle and this angle, this angle and this angle. If this is 120, therefore angle R must be 60 degrees. Alright, so that's it about supplementary angles. Next, the diagonals are perpendicular. So, diagonals are perpendicular. So, let's draw a diagonal. So, diagonals are perpendicular. What do you mean by that, sir? So, if we draw a diagonal class, diagonal, okay, let's draw a diagonal. So, if we draw a diagonal, this, you connect this, uh, the end point of W and R. So, if you draw this one, the diagonal, if you connect the end point of W and R and D and O, so we have a rhombus class, rhombus word, so we have, you can write that as rhombus, rhombus word, or some students, they will write, uh, uh, write it like this, a figure, word, alright, so rhombus word, so diagonals, we, we, we connect a diagonal, we connect this point and this point, this vertex, this, this point, this, this point W and point R, Okay, we connect the vertices, so W and R, we connect it and we form a diagonal. It says that the diagonals are perpendicular. Sir, what do you mean by perpendicular? It means that they form at the 90 degrees angle. So diagonal DO and diagonal OR bisect each other and they form a right 90 degrees angle. The meaning of perpendicular class, it means that they form a 90 degrees angle. So therefore, this angle here, it should be 90 degrees and this angle it's, it is 90 degrees this angle should be 90 degrees and this angle should be 90 degrees diagonals are perpendicular it means that they bisect each other and they form at a 90 degrees right angles all right so next diagonals bisect each other so what do you mean by diagonals bisect each other sir so let me erase this one so once again class do not forget diagonals are perpendicular it means that they intersect each other they bisect each other and they form a 90 degrees right angle perpendicular class it means that they form a 90 degrees angle or they form a right angle Alright, so what do you mean by diagonals bisect each other, sir? Diagonals bisect each other. The word bisect class, this one, the word bisect, they cut, okay, you cut, you cut the, you cut a line or an angle or any, any, you cut a line or any angle into two equal parts. But we talk about diagonals bisect each other, it means that, okay, diagonal bisect each other, it means that the, diagon the diagonal WR and diagonal DO, they intersect, they bisect each other. So meaning, bisect each other, it means that they cut the line into two equal parts. They cut the line into two equal parts. What do you mean by that, sir? It means that this line, okay, this WR cut by DO. So if we, if we, if we draw the diagonal WR alone, and then we draw a DO, we draw a diagonal DO, we cut this WR into two equal parts because it says diagonal bisect each other. So we DO bisect with WR, okay, DO bisect with WR, in which they in which DO cut the WR into two equal parts. So therefore this line, this WR, if we put a midpoint plus this is the midpoint E, therefore this WE is congruent to ER. This line is congruent to ER and this DE is congruent to EO. So if we will say that W, okay, let me just write it, WE is congruent to ER or RE, that's the same class, ER or RE. And DE is congruent to EO or OE. According to its definition, diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals by second chapter. So this line and this line is congruent. This line and this line is this line and this line are congruent. So if we will set an example, if DO, if the teacher will ask you the measure of DO, if DO is equals to 10, 
Okay, just an example. If DO is equals to 10, so, and you will be asked, and the teacher will ask you, what's the measure of DE? Therefore, if DO is 10, therefore DE must be 5, and OE must be 5. Because according to the definition, the diagonals bisect each other. They cut the line into two equal parts. So, if DO is 10, therefore DE is 5, and OE is 5. Now, if the teacher will ask you, if WR is 8, alright class, if WR is 8, WR is 8, what's the measure of WE and RE? So, WE is 4 and RE must be 4 because 8 divided by 2, you cut 8 into 2. 8 divided by 2, that's 4. So, that's it with diagonals bisect each other. So, let's try the last example. Diagonals, okay. Diagonals bisect the opposite side. Bisect the opposite sides. Alright, so let me just erase this one. Raise this, okay? Diagonals bisect opposite sides. So, what if we say that this is, okay? What if we say that this angle here, this angle D, okay? If this angle D is, let's say that this angle D is 140 degrees, and this is, okay, consecutive, consecutive angles, it should be 180. 80 degrees. If this is 140, this angle W should be 40 degrees, right? Because 140 plus 40, that's 180. Now, diagonals bisect opposite angles. So, diagonal bisect opposite angles. So, let's form a diagonal. Let's draw a line connecting from, there's vertex D and vertex O, endpoint D and O. So, if we draw a diagonal, so, diagonal bisect opposite angle. These are opposite angles. So, what, if this is 140, therefore, angle O must be 140 degrees. Now, if we draw a diagonal from D to O, so we draw a line from D to O, okay? If we draw a line from D to O, therefore, diagonals bisect, the word bisect there, class, do not forget, bisect, they divide a line or an angle into two equal parts. So, if D, if we draw a line, if we draw a diagonal from this angle, D and angle O, diagonal bisect opposite angles. These are opposite angles. From the, These are opposite angles, D and O. The word bisect there, it means they cut the angles or line into two equal parts. Therefore, if this is 140, we draw a diagonal and it bisect this opposite angle, bisect this opposite angles. Therefore, this 140, we can say that angle D W D O, angle angle W D O, it should be we just we just divide this 140 into two, so angle W D O it should be 70 degrees, and this one W D O and R R D O is equals to 70 degrees. And you will be asking, sir, why is it why is it 70 degrees? Because if angle D is 140, angle D alone is 140 degrees. And since we draw a diagonal, okay, do not forget, class, th that diagonal of this rhombus bisect the opposite sides. It means that, uh, bisect the opposite angle, sorry. Do not forget, class, that the diagonal of this rhombus bisect the opposite angles. It means that they cut the angles into half. So, ang if angle D alone is 140 degrees, therefore, we just divide it by 2. We can say that, okay, we can say that the angle WDO, angle WDO is equals to 70 degrees. And therefore, angle WOD is also 70 degrees degrees. So, this angle is equivalent to this angle. So, this is 70 degrees and this is 70 degrees. 70, 70, 70, 70. So, opposite angles are congruent. Now, if we draw another line from this angle, if this is 40, so if we draw another line from W to R, so we make it, do not forget last that W, angle W is 40 degrees and if we draw a diagonal, we cut the opposite angles into half. So we cut this into half. So therefore, right, sorry. Therefore, if this is 40, angle W itself is 40 degrees. We cut it into half. Therefore, this angle, it becomes 20 degrees. And this angle is 20 degrees. 
So, 20 degrees, 20 degrees. So, the opposite angles for this one, they should be equal. 20 degrees and 20 degrees. That's the properties, the last property of a rhombus. So, we cut the opposite angles into half. Diagonals bisect opposite angles. It means that they cut the opposite angles into two equal parts. Alright? So, that's about the properties of a rhombus. So, if you have some questions, class... Feel free to leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe. You share it to your friends. Our next video class is finding all sides and all angles of a rhombus and finding the x values. So we will be dealing that later on with our next video. I will just put the link in the description below on how to find all sides and all angles of a rhombus and finding the x values. More complicated example class. We are just talking about the properties of a rhombus. So you have a great day class. Goodbye. Bye for now.